So in the last sight of his friends, he drags the beast along with him to the edge of the cliff and jumps. Welcome to the Twisted Pint Tavern. Today we're visiting r slash D&D to check out the answers to what was the greatest act of bravery you've ever committed in your campaigns. It was glorious and sad, but it was rewarding in the end. My barbarian fighter, Buenos, died yesterday when jumping from a great height, clinging to a big monster that almost gave us a TPK. In the end, it turned out that only he died, sacrificing himself to spare his friends. It was magnificent. He held the green beast forward while looking at the cleric who had just been lifted, trying to stabilize the mage, and the warlock using Eldritch Blast. Yes, he ran out of slots. The ranger was down just waiting for the cleric to pick him up. The beast's turn was approaching, so I would fall too. We were all exhausted, so in the last sight of his friends, he drags the beast along with him to the edge of the cliff and jumps. This was the greatest act of kindness he'd done in the entire campaign. He was chaotic and neutral, but ended up becoming good friends with the rest of the party. Those moments around the table when everyone just shares that silent, I'm sorry look, but you know it's for a good cause, those can be some of the most impactful moments at the table, especially if you're roleplaying it well. My paladin sacrificed himself, but the party didn't let him die. There was a bunch of flammable gas in the room we were in, so we tried to find safety in a room that didn't have gas. But as everyone else went in, my paladin stayed and lit the gas, killing him and every enemy in the room and corridors. Roughly 23 enemies died. Then the party made a deal with a devil to bring to bring him back. Making a deal with the devil to bring a paladin back. I feel like that would give you a like a stern dad talking to afterwards. Our characters needed to collect samples of the strange liquid that had anti-magic properties. Because it negated all magic, we had to scoop it by hand into protective vials. The liquid was highly acidic, and you took damage each time you managed to get some on your skin. Deck safe to properly handle the acid. But because this primordial acid was also the literal lifeblood of an ancient god, repeated exposure to the acid could potentially mutate your body. The DM had written up a D100 table of the random effects that could take place after you reached a certain threshold of exposure. Some effects could be avoided with the con save. My ranger elected to be the one to harvest the acid samples, since she had the highest dex and con of the group. We were relatively low level, and the acid damage by itself was almost enough to kill me. Since the acid negated magic while I was in contact with it, no one could heal me during the process. I hit the exposure threshold three times, three D100 rolls. The first one turned my character's skin to stone, as if I was under the effect of a stone skin-like spell. Non-magical effect, just pure mutations. Permanent until we found a way to reverse it. The second one straight up turned my character into an earth, <laughs> into an earth elemental for seven days. That was fun. The last D100, the DM let me roll because the tension was really high. He made it explicitly clear that my character could die, and asked if I was prepared. I said yes. I rolled a 100. The DM just sat there and looked at me in silence for a minute, then finally said that nothing appears to have changed. So we finished gathering the acid for our mission and travel back to our city to recoup. We found an alchemist that could help reverse the stone skin so my character was effectively back to normal. But the alchemist said that he detected something strange about my character. I can't remember how he actually confirmed it, but he told my character that she gained the properties of eternal youth. She could still be killed by normal means, but otherwise would effectively live forever. This mutation was permanent. Sounds like a gift rather than a sacrifice, right? No. Later on down the campaign, my character ended up agreeing to serve a lost goddess that was searching for her half-mortal child that had been missing for millennia, and presumably still alive. The campaign ended after IRL three years, and we had our emotional epilogue to discuss what our characters do after the story's conclusion. My character ended up dedicating all her time to locating the lost demigod, which the DM said would involve literally searching the multiverse. She never got to grow old with her love interest, her twin brother, their little sister. She outlived her children, grandchildren, all of her friends. All the places she knew and loved fell to ruin across the passage of time. The DM and I never really decided if the goddess was ever reunited with her child. We left the ending ambiguous, I guess. But either way, my ranger was left to wander the multiverse for potentially millennia and eventually stopped returning home because the grief was too much. Since then, the DM has managed to place little easter eggs in each campaign to make small and subtle references to my character's journey, even if the campaign didn't take place in the same setting as my ranger since she's hopping through the multiverse. Maybe one day we'll find out if she ever succeeded. That is one hell of a story, and especially to just come from collecting acid. I mean, I get it, potent magical acid, but still that's quite the twist to come from that. 
Also, I absolutely love when DMs include Easter eggs to other players, especially ones who have, you know, multiversal travel or immortality or something like that to potentially indicate what they've been up to. Even if it's short term, even if you're playing in the same setting and it's just like 10, 20 years down the road, if you include Easter eggs about the old characters, trust me, the players will love it. While the party debated around a nightmare-inducing murder machine, my cleric deduced it could be stopped, but would surge an extreme amount of psychic damage. He calmly passed his stealth check to step onto the platform before quietly uttering to the party, when they ask, tell them it is always worth it. He was on 18 HP after the BBEG battle, out of slots and the only healer around. He took 100 plus damage, shutting the machine off in the process. Afterwards, he had a goodest boy combo with his god. Absolutely worth it. Some people think that the like self-sacrifice play to save everyone is kind of cliche and, and that there's usually a way around it, but I gotta be honest, sometimes there's not. The DM is not necessarily writing in a moment to where the players have to sacrifice themselves, but if you do that, I mean, the impact that can have on the story, on the party moving forward, on everything, it can just be substantial. It might not be bravery, but I'm still proud of this moment. My wife and I were playing in a group together and her character just died at the end of a combat where we first encountered the BBEG. Our cleric rushes to heal her, but doesn't have the right sized diamond to bring her back. Then I remember that, just before we started this mission, I had my fighter buy a very expensive diamond, about 300 gold to power his magical glaive, an heirloom of his. The diamond gave it the power to open portals into the ethereal plane at will. This was how my DM realized that he has to be careful with giving me broken powerful stuff. Yeah, that sounds powerful. Without a second thought, I break it out of my weapon and tell the cleric to use it, to the party's shock and delight. While it was the cleric that did the revival, my fighter is the one that saved her. My wife was delighted to keep playing her character, and my DM was relieved that he didn't need to deal with my ethereal plane antics. I eventually fixed and replaced the diamond with a sapphire that basically made the glaive into a limited use portal gun. It was also at the end of the session that my wife and I decided to play an actual in-game couple in our next campaign. This isn't about the kind of bravery where you're putting your life on the line, this is more about the sacrifice of giving up something really important and powerful to you. And yeah, while a lot of people would say that, well, any item is worth giving up to save a life, well, not everyone thinks that way. In D&D, people can be kind of greedy. So being willing to break your most powerful weapon just to revive somebody who may even be able to come back later anyway, I consider that pretty brave, at least in the sense of like material sacrifice. My story of bravery comes from my pirate game, where the players were in the middle of a ship to ship combat. They'd taken a lot of damage during the boarding on the top deck, then went below to the weapons deck to clear out the rest of the crew. One party member, the sorcerer, stayed up on top to clear out the captain's quarters, however. On the weapons deck, the remaining enemy crew are quickly being taken out. And in a desperate final act, one enemy crew member leaned over toward a powder keg with a glowing ruby pressed into the top of it. They slammed the hilt of their sword down onto it, breaking the ruby and releasing a fireball, detonating the powder keg. Several other powder kegs were on this deck all with the same enchanted ruby, clearly set up as a self-destruct system. As the blasting powder and roaring flames start to envelop the ship, the party is taking one last action to try and take cover or magically guard themselves from the explosion. However, the wounded sorcerer had just started to come down from the top deck when the explosion started. The Way of the Four Elements monk looked over to see her at the foot of the stairs near him and knew that the blast damage would drop her, possibly even kill her outright. He was planning to use his key to redirect the flames around him, saving himself, but upon seeing his wounded ally, made a last second decision to save her instead. He wove the fire blast away from her, just barely saving her from it. But as a result, he was consumed by the flames, making him fall unconscious and nearly killing him from massive damage. The party dumped a healing potion down his throat and dragged him out of the burning and sinking ship, and everyone made it out alive, but significantly battered and burned. Needless to say, that ship was lost, but an ally was saved at the cost of a couple eyebrows. And that's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you've not done so already. These acts of bravery are quite inspiring and I honestly love tales like this because it shows how into the roleplay people get. People can get really attached to their characters and not wanna do anything that puts them in severe danger, but when someone's willing to sacrifice themselves or something major to themselves, well, that can lead to a really compelling story. But enough about bravery and sacrifice. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see all of you wonderful people in the next video. Oh, what's the bravest thing I've done? I can't tell that story without getting into legal trouble.